This thalamus topic is so confusing. Let me check for a short video of it. Traffic is something that can't be avoided but can be made less cumbersome by building flyovers. One such flyover is Katipara. You might be thinking this is about flyovers, but hold on, thalamus is no different from Katipara. Just like how Katipara has different routes to reach your destination, thalamus has different tracks to reach different areas of the cerebral cortex. The thalamus is an egg-shaped structure situated obliquely atop the brainstem. It acts as a sensory relay station. It receives ascending sensory inputs and projects them to the sensory cortical areas. It forms part of the floor of the lateral ventricle. It has two poles, anterior and posterior, and four surfaces. Its relations are, anteriorly it is situated behind the interventricular foramen of Monroe. Posteriorly, it is situated in front of the superior colliculi and the pulvinus. Superiorly, it forms the floor of the central part of the lateral ventricle. Antero-inferiorly, it is related to the hypothalamus. Postero-inferiorly, it is related to the ventrolateral part of the thalamus. Medially, it forms the lateral wall of the third ventricle. And laterally, it is related to the posterior limb of the internal capsule. Thalamic nuclei are composed of a number of discrete nuclei. Thalamocortical and corticothalamic fibers form the external medullary lamina. It covers the lateral surface of the thalamus and passes between the reticular nucleus and the rest of the thalamus. Thalamic nuclei are of three types, the anterior, medial and lateral. These are separated by a Y-shaped internal medullary lamina. Anteriorly, the thalamus contains the anterior nuclei. Medially, the thalamus contains the medial nuclei, the midline nuclei, and the intralaminar nuclei. Laterally, the division is divided into the dorsal part and the ventral tire. The dorsal tire contains of the lateral dorsal, the lateral posterior, and the pulvinar nuclei, whereas ventrally, it contains the ventral anterior nuclei, the ventral lateral nuclei, and the ventral posterior nuclei. The ventral posterior nuclei is divided into the ventral posterior lateral nuclei and the ventral posterior medial nuclei. Furthermore, there are the medial and the lateral geniculate bodies, which help in auditory and vision respectively. Physiological classification of thalamic nuclei is classified into four parts specific relay nuclei, association nuclei, non specific nuclei, and motor nuclei. Firstly, specific relay nuclei consists of the ventrobasal complex, the lateral geniculate body, and the medial geniculate body. The association nuclei consists of the pulvinar, dorsal nuclei, and the lateral posterior nucleus. Non-specific nuclei consists of the intralaminar, midline, central median, and reticular nuclei. And finally, the motor nuclei consists of the lateral, ventral anterior, and the ventral lateral nuclei. Afferents and afferents of specific nuclei. Later ventral nuclei receives afferents from dentatothalamic and pallidothalamic tract and gives afferents to the thalamocortical tract, motor area number 4 and 6. Posterior ventral nuclei receives afferents from th- uh, spinothalamic fibers, trigeminothalamic fibers, and medial lemniscus and gives afferents to sensory cortex area number 3, 1, and 2. Dorsal lateral nuclei receives afferents from parietal lobe and gives afferents to the parietal lobe. Pulvinar nuclei receives afferents from parietal parietal temporal and occipital lobes and gives afferents to the parietal temporal and occipital lobes. Lateral geniculate bodies receive afferents from optic tract and gives afferents to the visual cortex. Medial geniculate bodies receive afferents from cochlea and the inferior colliculi and gives afferents to the auditory cortex. Afferents and afferents of non-specific nuclei. The anterior group of nuclei receive afferents from mammalothalamic tract. They give out afferents to the cingulate gyrus. The midline group of nucleus receives afferents from all ascending fibers and from the hypothalamus and reticular formation. It gives out afferents to neocortex, basal ganglia and the hypothalamus. 
intralaminar nucleus. It receives efferents from the reticular activating system and basal ganglia. It gives out efferents to neocortex and prefrontal cortex. The dorsomedial nucleus receives efferents from the hypothalamus and prefrontal cortex. It gives out efferents to prefrontal cortex. Functions of the thalamus include sensory functions, special senses, which divide into vision, which relays in area number 17 of the cortex, auditory, which relays in area number 41 in the cortex, and olfactory. The thalamus also regroups impulses, helps in sleep and arousal, and learning and memory. Coming to the applied aspects, lesion of the VPL occurs due to the thrombosis of the posterolateral branch of the posterior cerebral artery. This results in severe impairment of discriminative touch and pressure sensations of contralateral side. Also, sensory symptoms like astereognosis and loss of tactile sensations occur. Lesions to the posterior lateral nucleus which will lay cerebellar impulses to the excitomotor cortex areas number 4 and 6. Profound muscle weakness, decreased muscle tone, and ataxia are seen. A typical thalamic hand will have abnormal posture like moderate flexion of wrist and hyperextended fingers. Since the posteroventral nucleus of the thalamus relays skin, any thrombiotic blockage of thalamogeniculate artery causes lesions to the nuclear mass, resulting in loss of light touch sensations, tactile localization and discrimination, proprioception of small movements at joints, and thalamic overreaction, wherein the threshold for pain, touch, and temperature sensation is reduced, leading to hyperalgesia and paralgesia, in which a slight touch sensation becomes an exaggerated and disagreeable pain or burning sensation. The next day, Hey, Sadhna. Hey, do you remember my father who was acting unusual recently? Yeah, I do. It seems he has thalamic syndrome. Oh, is it? Could you please tell me what exactly happened? So tell me what seems to be the problem. Doctor, six months ago, he seemed to have had a stroke-like episode. Now his actions have been quite abnormal. So they have been like... Flashback. Hey, Mithun. You didn't cut your nails in this hand. It looks really dirty. Hey Mithun, where's my book? What book? The one I gave you yesterday. Which book? You seriously don't remember? A flashback. So did you consult any doctor after the episode? We visited a few doctors and they gave us different diagnoses and they told us to take a few reports, doctor, which I have with me right now. Did you take an MRI? Yes, doctor. I'll just send you the email now. Can you check if you received it, doctor? Yeah, sure. I have to do some examinations to confirm my diagnosis. Are you okay with it? Yeah. I'll give you an object. You'll have to feel and tell me what it is with your eyes closed. Can we do it? Yeah. Okay, so try to hold it with your hands. Uh, what uh, is it? I don't know. Okay, how about now? It's a pen. Yeah. I'm going to touch your hand with this object. You're going to tell me if you feel it or not with your eyes closed. Shall we do it? Sure. Yeah. I can feel it. How about now? Ah! Looks like your father has thalamic syndrome. Follow me. I'll explain. As you can see, we are in the heart of Thomas campus. From here, you can go to any point in the campus, be it Girls Hostel, Annex, Brown or Library. Just like that in our body, all the impulses relay in the thalamus except the olfactory. Imagine if there is a block in this way. It's gonna be difficult to go to different places in town. If there is any damage or lesion in the thalamus, the null impulses are not properly relayed. This leads to loss of coordination in the body which is the thalamic syndrome. 